Welcome to I've Got a Cool Job, Aurora Public Library's interview series where we talk to professionals who perform interesting work. I'm Sam Marcello, and with me this week is Ryan Tidman. So Ryan is a wildlife photographer and filmmaker living in Vancouver Island. Seeking any chance to spend time behind the camera, Ryan has had the opportunity to spend time with some of British Columbia's most iconic species above and below water. Ryan has worked for several environmental nonprofits, including Sea Legacy and Pacific World. He is now freelancing, shooting his own stories, and filming for National Geographic, Disney, and Netflix. Hey, Ryan, how are you today? Good. Thanks for having me. Ah, we're glad to have you. I mean, this is some exciting stuff we're going to talk about today with wildlife photography. I'm, I'm so jazzed. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I, I think people will enjoy it. So my mm -hmm. first question for you, Ryan, is how did you get involved in the world of photojournalism and why wildlife specifically? Yeah, so I mean, like like most people, I grew up watching the Planet Earth series and uh, reading the National Geographic magazines. And of course, it helps as my mom's a librarian. She's always bringing home all sorts of, uh, you know, wildlife books for me. I was, I was super interested in any outdoor nature uh, material, uh, which kind of inspired me to go to school for biology. Um, I went in for biology. I realized, you know, I, I love being out in the field and having these, you know, ex opportunities to work with animals, wildlife and, and being outside and not necessarily restricted to, uh, to a desk. And uh, yeah, I, I went to school at, at Guelph for biology. I, I realized I loved everything. And then when I was graduating Guelph or from Guelph, I was looking at, uh, uh, potential master placements and uh, you know my marks weren't necessarily the greatest but I knew like that was exactly what I wanted to do and I stumbled across this program offered at the Royal Ontario Museum down in Toronto called Environmental Visual Communications and uh, I applied to that and essentially the idea with that program was that it would um, integrate my background with biology into a course that taught uh, multimedia communication. So with photo and video on how to tell stories of science, which which really kind of inspired me to uh, to pursue as uh, growing up, it was always like, you know, the, the coolest parts about the Planet Earth series were kind of watching the behind the scenes on, you know, how these guys got the shots waiting in tents for months in the rainforest or you know, going to travel all corners of the, the planet to uh, have these intimate animal encounters. So you know, one thing led to another. And uh, I am currently still, I guess, chasing my dream. <laughs> yeah, but now you're the one that gets to have semi-intimate animal encounters, which is absolutely. <laughs> ah, I think it's amazing. I mean, I love animals. So like getting up close or even staying enough distance just to see kind of what they're doing and how they're interacting, it must be fascinating, honestly. Mm -hmm. So my next question for you is why is conservation work so important for you? Um, I guess the, the answer to that would be, it would be so easy for me not to do conservation work and just, you know, go and film these animals with no real purpose, but it doesn't make the work that inspiring or intriguing for me unless there's, you know, there's a result of what my work is, is doing. Um, and, you know, if I'm going to go out and spend all the time in the field with these animals, I, wait, I may as well try to make it beneficial for them as well. Um, so, yeah, I think conservation is almost a necessity for me in, in what I am filming. Uh, it needs to have some form of purpose. Beautiful. I, I actually like that that's kind of your approach to it. Um, I mean, again, when people do any kind of photography, you know, subject matter is always the most key po important part of it, right? Um, so that being said, what is one of the coolest experiences you've had with your job? Yeah, so I mean, you know, fortunately, I, I have a lot. Um, but there are a couple that definitely come to mind when when people ask me that. I'd say one of my most uh, memorable experiences were was on the BC coast in the Great Bear Rainforest in 2017. I was uh, uh, heading up north to film grizzly bears by, or sorry, spear bears by boat, which was really cool. And, uh, you know, we had to spend a couple of days heading up the coast. And one of the nights we spent uh, anchored right off this small island where uh, my old boss, Paul Nicklin, had um, shot, photographed um, rain wolves, which are coastal wolves in British Columbia for National Geographic. 
So he was familiar with our wolves in the area, but they're, they're very elusive, so we weren't expecting to see any. Uh, anyways, we woke up five in the morning and the idea was to get out before sunrise and set up all the camera equipment and I guess just wait to see if, if we would have any luck with wolves swimming from island to island uh, in search for food. And sure enough, we had uh, three wolves come up to us, you know, right after sunrise and uh, Paul was filming behind me and I was taking stills in front of him and to try to get out of one of his shots, I lay down on my stomach. And as soon as I laid down my stomach, one of the wolves came right up to me and started like checking me out and inspecting me. And at one point the wolf was so close, I couldn't even focus my camera. So I just put the camera down and all I could feel was her breathing on my forehead. So that was, you know, that was definitely a powerful moment for me and uh, one of my most memorable experiences. Okay. That actually is a cool experience. <laughs> uh, my understanding of spirit bears is they're, kind of elusive mm -hmm. in a lot of ways too so absolutely you had to catch them that is special i gotta say mm -hmm. i could just mm -hmm. add, like ask you to like tell me all your stories because i feel like they'd all be really fascinating <laughs> but we don't have that kind of time um okay how much and how far have you traveled for your work where are you hoping to go next mm -hmm. so uh, fortunately I guess pre COVID I've, I've had opportunities to kind of travel all over. Um, a lot of the work has been in, um, Canada primarily, obviously just where we're based. And unfortunately Canada has such a diverse set of, of animals to work with. So it, it's really kind of a perfect location for a wildlife photographer or filmmaker. Um, one of like I, I have of course uh, plenty of bucket list destinations but one that really sticks to me um is the Falkland Islands and South Georgia Island um just for the yeah you know, the, the penguins the albatross the the true wildlife um it's it's you know reasonably untouched by people and I think that that would be a really special uh experience yeah no that would be amazing also just penguins are adorable let's be honest yeah. they are the cutest thing <laughs> No, and that's it. Like, I think with COVID, I'm sure it's definitely changed the nature of your work in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what is one animal you'd love to photograph, but you haven't had the chance yet? Yeah, so uh, I, I think, you know, what I'm most interested in when I'm watching, you know, any of the natural history series is I love big cats. And not necessarily, you know, African big cats, the stereotypical ones, lions, uh, tigers, whatever it is. But I, I really am interested in North American big cats. So lynx, cougar, bobcats. Uh, I think that's all super, super fascinating as, well, one, I live on Vancouver Island, which actually has the densest population of cougars in the world. And never seen one, never even gotten close, right? So I, I'm really driven towards that. Um, uh, I guess, pursuit in, in trying to find one of those animals and, and having a, you know, a special encounter with them. Well, hopefully that does happen. I mean, again, if yeah. it's amazing that you live in Vancouver Island and have not spotted one yet. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. my, my backyard has nothing but coyotes once in a while, right? <laughs> All right. Um, do you prefer getting to work with land or water animals? Yeah. Um, uh, it, that's a hard question to answer because they're both, you know, equally as, as interesting, but I, I think the land is, is probably my preference, I'd say at this point, just because it's, it takes way less gear and I'm already working with a ton of gear in the field. So then when you're adding scuba on top of it and having to deal with all of your equipment, it's, it's a lot to handle. Um, but uh, yeah, as soon as you have these opportunities to go under the water, you know, it's just adding another layer of, of interest with, uh, I don't know, anything that you're filming underwater from sea lions to sharks, whatever it is. Um, it, it, they're both very fun. <laughs> I don't know if I could do the water one, man. I mm. love to swim, but I look at it and I'm like, oh, that could be scary. I, I mean, <laughs> I think you have to have a little bit of, I guess, fearlessness to do that in a lot of ways, correct? Especially like sharks. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's strange. Like, as as long as I have a camera or a video, like a film camera in front of me, I, I don't even like I disassociate myself with with the actual encounter experience going on. I'm just totally looking at something taking place from behind a screen. <laughs> it's like a safety, right? Yeah, yeah gotcha. a placebo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. How would you describe the connection between wildlife photography and conservation? Um, I, I guess just like I said earlier, uh, for me, it's, it's essential and integral. Okay. Um, of course, there are a lot of photographers who are not conservationists and a lot of conservationists who are not photographers. Um, but I, I think definitely, you know, going to school and, and having that uh, background knowledge with the science is definitely one, it, it, it makes way more sense for me to integrate the two. But two, uh, I also know firsthand that scientists are already busy doing their, their own research and they don't necessarily have time to write the news articles that, you know, people can actually relate to or understand or take the photos in that same manner. So uh, it's really important to be, as a wildlife photographer, to also work with scientists in, in helping them progress with their research and then giving purpose to your work. That's a fantastic answer. And I think the level of, again, it's associating yourself and understanding that your role, the role of scientists and the role of the wild are all equally valuable and important in finding and figuring out this conversation. Um, my final question then for you is, what do you... How do you tell stories through your photography and what kind of impact do you want your work to have? Yeah, so I guess the, <laughs> the classic saying is a photo is worth a thousand words and, and I hope that's the case. Um, uh, with writing uh, anything for photojournalism or for articles, it's, it's always important to make sure that those photos, one, are not just beautiful, nice looking photos of animals, but, but they are telling a story or they are complementing other photos within your story. Um, I, I think it's just, it, it's, it's always like, it's something I can't answer because I'm still learning myself and, and my style of work is changing and evolving as, as I do new work. So the photo, the photo is just as important as the text, uh, but you need, you need them to complement each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's a perfect answer in a lot of ways. How long have you been actually at this, Ryan? Um, I started four or five years ago now and uh have just taken in full-time freelance as of last year around this time last year so full-time field work since last year that's amazing and I'm, I'm assuming just when you say that like, the change um in your work you're referring to just the fact that from where you started to where you are now you as a person have evolved into the kind of photographer that you want to be absolutely and and of course it's it's a continuous evolving pattern it's it's never ending <laughs> which makes it exciting like librarians yes. or evolving species <laughs> <laughs> well ryan thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and um i hope that the work that you do continues to flourish and be absolutely amazing and i can't wait to share with people uh the work that you do so thank you so much for your time Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Bye. All right.